CanJam Singapore is taking place March 25th and 26th at the Pan Pacific Singapore Hotel in Marina Square. Now we have a lot of gear to highlight in this video, but before we get started, we want to give a special thanks to this year's CanJam Singapore sponsors, DCS, Effect Audio, Headphonics, and In-Ear Fidelity. Now sit back, relax, and get ready for just a sample of all of the gear at CanJam Singapore this year. Last month, on their way to CanJam New York, the Campfire Audio team got caught up in snow and ice storms that paralyzed much of the U.S., something I'm sure most Singaporeans have thankfully never had to deal with. Anyway, Campfire made every effort to get their team out of Portland to get to New York, but like countless others there, they simply could not find a way out. They were gutted about it. We were gutted about it. But I'm thrilled to say Campfire Audio will be at CanJam Singapore. Campfire Audio has been around since the earliest days of HeadFi, and it's a company made up of people who are just as much headphone audiophile hobbyists as the rest of us. And while they've successfully made and sold products in every HeadFi category, I'd say my favorites have no doubt been their in-ears. At CanJam Singapore, Campfire Audio will have their full product lineup, so make sure not to miss their in-ears, including these new IEMs, the Campfire Audio Andromeda Emerald C and the Campfire Audio Solera Stellar Horizon, both of which are all new. The Campfire Audio Andromeda family has been a franchise in our industry, Campfire having released several different Andromeda models, each with their own different characters. The Andromeda Emerald C uses five new custom dual diaphragm balanced armatures in a too low, one mid, too high configuration. It also has new internal acoustic geometry and newly designed 3D printed driver housings. Again, despite the Andromeda name, it's an all new model. Even the shape of its aluminum shell has been updated. It's smaller now with more contours for improved comfort and with new stainless steel fasteners and MMCX capture. As for its sonic character, I think Campfire Audio's description of the Andromeda Emerald C as having a sweet analog glow is definitely in line with what I'm hearing, with a subdued character that's both mellow and clean. And while the Andromeda Emerald C is still sensitive, I believe it's less sensitive than all Andromedas that came before it, so keep that in mind if you're going to A-B against one of your previous model Andromedas. Now, of their new models, the one I'm most excited about is the Campfire Audio Solaris Stellar Horizon. I've been really enjoying my time with this IEM. The Solaris Stellar Horizon is, again, all new, each side having balanced armatures in a too high single mid configuration and a full range 10mm ADLC dynamic driver. Now, surrounding that full range 10mm ADLC dynamic driver is a new radial venting design, creating greater air volume, expanding the physical space in which the driver operates. This radial venting is designed to provide greater soundstage and improve dynamics, and that's something I want to comment on. I love the way the Solaris Stellar Horizon images. As IEMs go, its imaging is wide without being too diffuse. To me, sounding more headphony than earphony in this respect, and I really like that. I'm guessing this relative airiness is a combination of the radial venting and the way they've tuned this IEM. As for its tuning, the Solaris Stellar Horizon's tonal balance is within my range of neutral, and its bass presence sounds just about what I'd consider ideal for a reference IEM. Now, I rarely focus on how audio products look, but I have to mention that the Solaris Stellar Horizon is, to me, one of the coolest looking IEMs on the market. It has a machined brushed stainless steel housing with brass fasteners and MMCX capture. The integrated faceplate has gold PVD inlays with contrasting black laser cut acrylic that's so precision cut and fit, I thought it was black enamel. It's a gorgeous design. I want to also mention that both the Solaris Stellar Horizon and Andromeda Emerald C come with beautifully crafted leather carrying cases with magnetic closures. They're among the most fuss-free IEM case designs out there. They both also come with three of Campfire's Timestream cables with 3.5mm, 2.5mm, and 4.4mm terminations. And they both also come with these very cool functional wood storage crates for your desk that have these miniature hands to hold your IEMs. I love these crates. Anyway, don't miss Campfire Audio's exhibit at CanJam Singapore. There are a handful of brands that originally began life as head fire hobbies, and perhaps one of the best known examples is Dan Clark Audio. From their beginnings modifying Fostex headphones under the name Mr. Speakers, to designing and creating their own world-class headphones, Dan Clark Audio's tale is well known here in our community. At CanJam Singapore this year, you'll be able to experience some of their latest creations, one of which was launched just last month. This is the all-new Dan Clark Audio Carina Electrostatic Headphone, and if that name is new to you, you're not alone. The Carina was a stealth announcement just before CanJam New York in February, and the reveal of a new flagship class Electrostat from Dan Clark took everyone by surprise. 
The Carina is Dan Clark Audio's first electrostatic headphone to incorporate their AMTS technology, that's Acoustic Metamaterial Tuning System, which is something we've discussed at length with Dan Clark in our videos about the DCA Stealth and Expanse planar magnetic headphones. The Carina features a re-engineered 88mm electrostatic driver design, and Dan Clark Audio even developed a new driver fabrication process to improve diaphragm tension for a more linear overall system response and reduce distortion. As a result of these advancements, Dan Clark Audio managed an overall response that's smoother throughout the treble and mid-range for the new Carina. Comfort has also been improved. The Carina takes advantage of the auto-adjusting headband design found on the Expanse and Stealth models, and new pads have been fitted with a hybrid of leather and suede to maintain a seal while reducing moisture and heat buildup, something always welcome in the Singaporean climate. Speaking of those pads, the team at DCA is even matching pads on the Carina for more reliable and accurate channel balance. The cable is user-replaceable, and in my opinion, it has one of the best-looking open grill designs I've seen on an electrostatic headphone. Now thankfully, Dan Clark Audio has confirmed for us that they'll be getting a few production models of the Carina into the country just in time for CanJam Singapore this year, which means you'll be among some of the first in the world to hear this soon-to-be iconic electrostatic flagship. Make your way to Ang Siang's exhibit at CanJam Singapore, and be sure to audition the Carina alongside Dan Clark Audio's Stealth, Expanse, and Aeon 2 Noir. Theo will be at CanJam Singapore, and I'm so looking forward to seeing them. With all that's gone on in the world these last few years, it's been a long time since I've seen Theo at a show. Theo, to me, is one of the most interesting companies in our industry. They endeavor to compete with the best in the industry, especially in terms of innovation and engineering, but to do so at reasonable, attainable prices. A few years back, I visited Theo's office and factory in Guangzhou, China, and it really was incredible. Their R&D labs were state-of-the-art with gear from Audio Precision, Keysight. I mean, look at this RF anechoic test chamber. They test materials and parts as they come in. They do electronic, electroacoustic RF testing, environmental testing with a programmable temperature and humidity chamber, and more. Again, just incredible. At CanJam Singapore, expect FIO to have their fantastic and very broad product lineup, and make sure to look for this at the show. This is the FIO R7, and the FIO R7 is challenging to explain succinctly, but like me, you'll probably find it's something you'll want once you understand the many things it can do, the many things it can be. Now, before you come to the show, then, go to our forums at headfi.org and search for the FIO R7, where people, including FIO team members, are discussing the R7. Also, go to FIO's R7 product page on FIO's website. Now, in a CanJam preview video segment like this, I only have time to just scratch the surface of all that the R7 is, so let me start scratching. What is the FIO R7, then? FIO calls it a desktop, high-resolution transmitter, decoder, and headphone amplifier all in one unit. And I don't even think that covers everything. So let's start with how I use the R7 now and what I intend to do with it later. Right now, the FIO R7, for me, is serving as a small footprint rune-ready DAC and headphone amp at one of my desks at home. This rune-ready functionality is huge for me because in terms of my music media, rune is the experiential center of that universe. With the R7, its nice 5-inch screen shows me using rune, the album art of what I'm playing, it gives me on-screen controls. Anyway, if you're a music lover and you haven't tried rune, you absolutely must do so. Also, the R7 can act as a network music server through DLNA, accessing music on the R7's internal storage, micro SD cards, or a connected external drive. The FIO R7's DAC is based on the ESS9068AS and can decode everything I want it to up to 32768 and DSD512. The R7's amp section is based on a pair of THX AAA788 Plus headphone amps, and with these amps inside, the R7 is a beast, outputting up to 3650 milliwatts into 32 ohms out of its balanced outputs with a peak voltage of 39 volts peak to peak. It'll drive just about anything. But the R7 also has five different gain settings, and with the ultra low noise THX AAA amps, that means it can also finesse even ultra-sensitive IEMs. For balanced headphone outputs, it has 4.4mm and 4-pin XLR outputs, and has an unbalanced headphone out via a standard quarter-inch jack. Now, how I intend to use the FIO R7 later comes up when I add active desktop speakers to my new desk at home. The R7 has super versatile preamp functionality, so it can control whichever active loudspeakers I end up going with. This, in addition to the R7 still being my primary headphone audio system at that desk. Again, I'm barely scratching the surface of all the R7 can do. I haven't even mentioned yet that it supports AirPlay receiver mode, Bluetooth receiver mode supporting SBC, AAC, and LDAC, and Bluetooth transmission supports the same, but also with Aptex HD and LHDC. 
Just looking at its back panel gives you some idea of its versatility. But there's also a lot more that FIO's software and hardware engineers did to make the FIO R7 so versatile. The R7 even serves as my desk clock. So again, check out our forums and FIO's website to learn more about the FIO R7 before coming to CanJam. Then at the show, make sure to sit down with the R7 considering the ways it fits with your needs. And of course, check out FIO's many other products at CanJam Singapore. If you've been thinking of picking up a Signature Series cable from Effect Audio, don't. Not yet. At least not before you have a listen to these. These are the all-new 8-wire editions of Effect Audio's immensely popular Aries S and Cadmus cables, and they are making their debut at CanGem Singapore 2023. Aside from the obvious difference of being physically more substantial, both of them offer notable sonic improvements over their 4-wire counterparts. Notably, fuller and more visceral bass response, enhanced detail resolution, more refined upper mid-range presentations, and wider staging. So unless you absolutely need the weight savings of their 4-wire siblings, I'd suggest these new 8-wire versions as the definitive editions of both Aries S and Cadmus. While you're at Effect Audio's exhibit, be sure to demo their flagship copper cable, the Co23. It's a dual-purpose cable that you can spec out for either headphones or IAMs. However, be advised that it does feature a 16.5 gauge solid copper core, which ergonomically slants it towards full-size headphones. You'll definitely want to test drive it first if you intend to use it for IEMs. Only you can decide if it's powerfully impactful bass response, decadently sweet mids, and refined top end are worth the girth. And don't forget to audition Effect Audio's collaboration IEM with the Lizian Acoustic Labs, the Gaia a hybrid IAM with one dynamic driver and four balance armature drivers per side, paired with a custom effect audio cable featuring copper and silver-plated copper conductors. Sound-wise, the Gaia has developed a somewhat polarizing reputation within the HeadFi community due to its neutral bright tuning and tightly controlled bass response. It's because of this that you simply must audition a Gaia for yourself to see if it... Wait a tech. The Gaia could use more bass, and the Code 23 accentuates bass. I'll be right back. Okay, I can't believe that actually worked. It's not a perfect solution, but it seems like the Code 23 goes a long way towards enhancing the Gaia's low end. And it seems like Effect Audio knows this as well, because they'll be offering a special promotional bundle exclusively for CanJam Singapore attendees. Stop by Effect Audio's exhibit to see how much you can save on both at CanJam Singapore 2023. At CanJam Singapore this year, DCS will be showing something they did not show last year, and it's this. This system is the full DCS Lena system. It's a three-piece system purpose-built for headphone listeners. It consists of a dedicated network DAC, a master clock, and a headphone amplifier. And while you can buy them all as a system, each of these can be picked up separately. And this DCS Lena system is one of the finest desktop headphone hi-fi systems I've ever heard and used. Since DCS over the last several decades has been best known for their digital-to-analog converters, and specifically DACs built on their unique and legendary DCS ring DAC technology, I'm going to focus on the Lena Network DAC. In addition to doing and decoding everything I'd want a Network DAC to do and decode, the DCS Lena Network DAC has technologies and features very specific to headphone audiophiles. One of those technologies is something called DCS Expanse Technology, which is a headphone processing platform that offers very advanced crossfeed. I've said countless times before, I'm a big fan of crossfeed when I feel it's needed. It's a very important feature for me. And with Lena, it's happening at the DAC level. This means no matter which amp I pair with the Lena Network DAC, I will have DCS Expanse technology in the system. With DCS Expanse, there's a standard crossfeed setting and two other Expanse crossfeed settings that are more advanced, preserving the reverberation in a recording which standard crossfeed circuits can often deaden or soften. Of course, and perhaps most importantly, the DCS Network DAC is among the finest sounding DACs I've ever had the joy of listening to. While at DCS's exhibit, also make sure to do their Master Clock demo. At last year's CanJam Singapore, I was finally able to do a Master Clock demo for the first time at DCS's exhibit, with the DCS Bartok switching a DCS Rossini Master Clock in and out, and the difference was striking in that system. Others there who walked in to do the same demo ended up with the same surprised look I had. You'll be able to demo the new DCS Lena Master Clock this year at CanJam Singapore. The Lena Master Clock allows the Lena Network DAC to be locked to a master reference signal, minimizing jitter and other irregularities. Regularities. It's a great demo, and I think you'll quickly understand why most DCS DAC customers end up with a DCS Master Clock at some point. 
And the DCS Lena headphone amplifier is a beautiful beast of an amp. The Lena headphone amplifier is very flexible, with a deft touch to drive even my sensitive IEMs, or authoritatively drive challenging headphones like the Hi-Fi Man Suzvara. Anyway, the full DCS Lena system is something you must audition at CanJam Singapore. Oh, Singapore, you might not realize this, but you were the envy of many head fires from all over the world last year when ZMF Headphones' Atrium premiered at CanJam Singapore 2022. And this year, you're ahead of the curve again, because you'll get to audition the all-new Atrium closed before it's officially launched at Zeppelin and Company's exhibit at CanJam Singapore 2023. Though it's not an identical twin in closed back form, the Atrium Close is much closer to the Atrium Open than most open and closed headphone siblings that I've tried, with fairly minimal differences between them. Overall, the spectral tilt is quite similar across the entire frequency range, though the Atrium Close does offer more low-end rumble, which is to be expected of a closed-back headphone. The Atrium Close is also not as wide open with its soundstage, though that's not saying much as there are plenty of open headphones, including other ZMF open back models that aren't as wide open as the Atrium Open. And finally, the Atrium Close has ever so slightly more emphasis in its presence region. But that's pretty much it as far as differences go. All told, the two Atriums are much closer than I thought they would be, but they are nonetheless close fraternal twins as opposed to identical twins. One area where the Atrium Close is decidedly different from its open batch sibling is isolation. So if you're already a proud owner of an Atrium Open for home listening, then the Atrium Close could be a perfect companion for you down at the office. While you're visiting with the wonderfully helpful team at Zeppelin and Company's exhibit, make sure you get caught up with ZMF Headphones' other recent launches, like their affordably priced overachiever, the Autour Classic, and their first planar headphone in over seven years, the Caldera all at CanJam Singapore 2023. Meza Audio will be joining us for CanJam Singapore this year, and they're going to be bringing with them something many of you will not want to miss. This is a new mid-range headphone from Meza Audio called the 109 Pro, and it's something truly special. Its physical design may be inspired by Meza Audio's now iconic 99 Classics, but aside from a few aesthetic similarities, the 109 Pro is a new creation through and through. It starts with a new driver. For the 109 Pro, Meza Audio developed a new diaphragm design called the 109 Series Dual Membrane Diaphragm. This dual membrane diaphragm takes a W-shaped cellulose carbon fiber composite dome and wraps a beryllium-coated semi-crystalline polymer torus around it. That torus is ultra-thin and rigid, and it's specifically designed to give the driver a quick transient response. As you can see, the 109 Pro is an open back design, another distinction from its 99 Classics relative. In fact, this is Meza Audio's first ever open back dynamic, as their popular Elite and Empyrean headphones are both planar magnetic designs. The 109 Pro has a gorgeous spider structure on the outside of its dark walnut ear cups, and a visually transparent grille revealing the dual membrane diaphragm driver on the inside. No matter which side you look at, it's remarkably open, which spells out great things for the sound. The Meza 109 Pro has a signature very much in line with my idea of audiophile fun. It's highly resolving and technically proficient in the high end, mids are vibrant and lively without becoming overly pronounced, and the low end is snappy and textured with enough body when the song calls for it, but without bloated wobbling and excess weight. This is one of those headphones that I can listen to for hours on end, and you can come see why for yourself at Meza Audio's exhibit. Now, the 109 Pro won't be the only full-size headphone you'll want to try out at Meza Audio's exhibit. They'll also have their flagship planar magnetic headphones I mentioned earlier, like the Meza Audio Elite. We've talked about the Elite countless times on HeadFi TV, and for good reason. It's an incredible headphone. From its superior class-defining build quality, to its spectacular switchback design planar magnetic driver, to its almost god-tier comfort, the Elite is a headphone that embodies every single aspect of the word premium. CanJam Singapore will be the perfect time to experience the aptly named Elite for yourself. Odyssey will be at CanJam Singapore, and their latest headphone is a technological powerhouse and definitely not the kind of headphone you're probably used to from Odyssey. But it is one I think a lot of you will unexpectedly realize you want or even need after you try it at CanJam. This is Odyssey's new Maxwell, and it's their latest planar magnetic gaming headset. But unlike any other gaming headset I've used, the Odyssey Maxwell can be a lot more than a gaming headset. But let's start with the Maxwell as a gaming headset. We've got a lot of gaming headsets here at HeadFi HQ, and the Maxwell is easily the best-sounding, most-resolving, purpose-built gaming headset we've used so far. 
We've used the Maxwell PlayStation version wirelessly with the PlayStation 5 and the PS5's built-in 3D audio for headphones, and wirelessly with the Xbox Series X with the Xbox version of Maxwell, which has an embedded Dolby Atmos license that also works with Windows. And with both of these platforms, the Maxwell's immersiveness and sound quality is awesome. And wirelessly, it seems like there's essentially no latency. If you're an online gamer, the outgoing voice quality is fantastic using either the internal microphone or the boom mic, and the noise canceling for outgoing chat and communications is insane, so it's great for work calls too. Odyssey has demoed the outgoing noise canceling by talking into the Maxwell while sitting next to a running blender, and you cannot hear the blender. So again, the Maxwell is more than just a gaming headset. The Odyssey Maxwell is also an outstanding Bluetooth over-ear headphone with Bluetooth 5.3 and support for Multipoint, LE Audio, LC3, LC3+, LDAC, AAC, and SBC. I've used it as a Bluetooth headphone to listen to music from my iPhone 13 Pro Max via AAC and also with my Android phone using high-quality LDAC, and the Maxwell is a wonderful wireless headphone for music listening. There are several EQ settings for different gaming scenarios, but also some that are great EQ choices for music, and these EQ profiles are easily selectable with one hand or via an app. During development, Odyssey's team sent us countless firmware updates to work through and fine-tune their EQ settings, and they did a wonderful job with them. You can also use the Odyssey Maxwell wired via a standard headphone output with a 3.5mm terminated cable, or digitally wired via USB-C with dual audio endpoints and game chat mix. And for all this, the Odyssey Maxwell will run for over 80 hours from a full charge. And for only $299 US for the PlayStation version, or $329 US for the Xbox One, it's amazing how good these are for the money. Do not make the mistake of skipping the Odyssey Maxwell at CanJam Singapore because it's just a gaming headset. The Maxwell is a lot of things, and it's a lot of things affordably. Of course, Odyssey will have all its more traditional audiophile headphones at their exhibit, so make sure not to miss their two co-flagships, the planar magnetic flagship Odyssey LCD5 and their electrostatic flagship Odyssey Carbon. Both are two of the high standards of resolution, in my opinion, and you'll understand why people were standing in long lines to hear them when they were first launched at CanJam SoCal 2021. Also make sure to check out their first purpose-built studio monitor headphone, the Odyssey MM500, and what is still one of my all-time favorite headphones from Odyssey, the latest generation Odyssey LCD-X. And also, of course, make sure to check out the rest of Odyssey's product lineup at CanJam Singapore. Last month at CanJam New York, Elatech gave Headfires a preview of their two new Virtue Series tables, Asriel and Cassiel, and both were an immediate hit with attendees. This month, at CanJam Singapore, they will finally be available to the public as both are being officially launched at the show. Asriel is a 4-wire all-copper cable with natural weight and warmth and a vivid mid-range. It'll be priced at $249. Cassiel is a 4-wire silver-plated copper cable with type-based response, accentuated treble, and wide-open staging. And it'll be priced at $299. That said, the Elotech model that I'm most excited about is their all-new Raphael, the upcoming flagship model of their revamped Virtues line. Raphael is a 4-wire 9-core cable consisting of two different wire compositions, gold-plated copper and a gold-copper alloy. That's right, I said gold. Now this is just a preview and nothing is set in stone, but I happen to know the price point that Elotech is aiming for with the Raphael. If they can hold to that, then we're looking at a flagship kilobuck product clothed in entry-level pricing. And finally, Elotech's upcoming Secret IM collaboration has advanced to its next stage of development. After the feedback they received at CanJam New York, they prepared not just one, but three new prototypes for CanJam Singapore. Be sure to check out all three and be amongst the first to hear what could very well be your new endgame IAM. Again, these are sneak previews, so they might not be displayed openly. Just tell them that Warren sent you, and mention the code phrase, Queen Anne's Revenge, to get access to them. CanJam Singapore may be a mecca of portables and IEMs, but there are also many full-size headphones that should not be missed at the show. Headphones like this, the Abyss Headphones Diana TC. Now, if you're not already familiar with Abyss Headphones' Diana line, it's in essence a scaled-down version of much of the tech found in their positively massive Abyss Headphones AB1266, and where the AB1266 models are a bit unusual in our space, the Diana line takes a more universal approach. This particular model, the Diana TC, utilizes the same ultra-low-mass driver design found in Abyss Headphones' flagship AB1266 Phi TC. 
Its 63mm planar magnetic driver is housed within a lightweight aircraft-grade aluminum frame and finished with stainless steel hardware, a magnetically adjustable headband with leather and alcantara, and the latest generation of Abyss headphones is Diana ear pads in either lambskin or vegan ultra suede. So why do I think the Diana TZ is worthy of your time at CanGem Singapore? The answer is simple. It's an incredible headphone. It's highly resolving with a tight, quick, low end, linear in all the right ways, with a sense of air and spaciousness that you might not expect from a compact planar magnetic headphone. Its tightly packed proportions allow it to serve as an excellent travel companion, fitting easily in a backpack or messenger bag for use on the go. In fact, this exact unit has served as the hotel room headphone for us here at HeadFi HQ on numerous trips around the globe. Pair it with your favorite source, and you'll have a complete portable rig just as engaging and inviting as your home setup. IEMs may be considered the kings of portable audio by many, but at this year's CanJam Singapore, make sure that the Abyss Headphones Diana TC is on your list and experience just what a compact, lightweight, full-size planar magnetic headphone can achieve. You may just find yourself leaving your IEMs behind on your next journey. If you've been following the impressions coming out of CanJam New York last month, then you know one of the biggest hits of the show was this, Fur Audio's new limited edition Radon 6 Hybrid IEM. I've been listening to it since it first arrived for the preview video, and I have to say I can completely understand the positive sentiments surrounding it. If you're familiar with Fur Audio's flagship Xenon 6, you can think of the Radon 6 as a kindred signature, but one with a more carefully sculpted mid-bass presentation, resulting in less bloat bleeding onto the lower mids. Though that's a relatively modest change in the grand scheme of things, it's enough to render the Radon 6 much more cordial to a wider range of genres. And as a multi genreist myself, I am very appreciative of that. So far, the Radon 6 has played well with all manner of audiophile fare, from classical, ranging from large-scale symphonic works to more intimate guitar duets, to jazz, to standards, to folk, and of course, female vocals. But it also excels at rock and alternative, as well as pop and hip-hop and electronic music. Even ancient pre-millennial K-pop sounds solid. Just about the only thing I'm not wild about is the limited run of only 300 units worldwide. As more and more people audition and subsequently deplete this limited supply, I can easily foresee a day when there will simply be none left. But until that day comes, don't miss your chance to audition to Radon 6, as well as the rest of Fur Audio's Frontier series at CanJam Singapore 2023. At CanJam New York last month, a new portable player was unveiled for head fires to try. A new player that may not be quite what you'd expect. A new player from KN. A new player called the N7. KN describes the N7 as the first and only DAP that incorporates a bitstream or 1-bit DSD DAC in portable applications. If that sounds familiar to you, these types of DACs are often used in large-scale, full-size audio components like Super Audio CD players. In total, KN says there are over 100 discrete resistors incorporated into the DAC circuit, so if you love the sound of a well-designed resistor setup, the N7 will be ready and waiting. Now, of course, there are certain specs which I feel must be met for a player to earn its place in our community, and the KN N7 comes ready to play in a price bracket more welcoming than you might expect. The N7's amp design allows you to switch between Class A and Class AB amplification, something I appreciated with a number of my IEMs like the Sennheiser IE900, and it can output up to 250 milliwatts single ended and up to 500 milliwatts when running balanced via the 4.4 millimeter output. It supports PCM at a 32768 and DSD 512, and because it's a bitstream DAC design, those DSD files are decoded natively. All of this is running on Android 12, supported by a Snapdragon 665 processor with 4 GB of memory, and controlled via a large 5-inch touchscreen. As a result, the KN N7 feels reasonably quick and nimble. Speaking of feeling, the curved chassis feels great in the hand, and with power delivery 2.0 quick charge and a battery life of up to 10 hours, you won't have to worry about charge anxiety. So if you're in the market for a portable player and you're not sure where to begin at CanJam Singapore, let me suggest a great starting point the KN N7 at Zeppelin & Co.
Last year at CanJam Singapore was the first time I'd listened to Elysian Acoustic Lab's IEMs. I was guided to Elysian's exhibit by people whose ears I trust, to meet Elysian's founder, Lee Kuan Min, who smiled a knowing smile, because I think he knew I was going to like what I was about to hear. And what I was about to hear was Elysian's Diva in-ear monitor. And yeah, for dang sure, I liked what I heard. With a beautifully balanced default tuning, there are three selectable tunings, and with its wonderful resolution and impressive imaging, the Elysian Acoustic Lab's Diva was one of the best new products I heard at CanJam Singapore last year. Of course, Elysian will be at CanJam Singapore this year, and they'll have their latest improved Diva there, so don't miss it. The Diva uses six balanced armature drivers with a four-way crossover. When I sat down, though, I had no idea what the driver configuration was. But I'd have easily believed one full-range driver as much as I'd believe six, because from bottom to top, the presentation is entirely cohesive. And like I mentioned earlier, the Diva has three different signatures, easily selectable with a three-way bass switch. I prefer the default middle tuning, but it's great to be able to so easily choose less or more bass. It's a nice bit of flexibility, and the other tunings are also well executed. Now for the Diva in 2023, some improvements have been made, including a second generation crossover PCB, a new metal soundboard design, upgraded stainless steel parts, upgraded internal wiring with custom strand ultra pure Ono continuous cast copper and silver lits, and aesthetic updates. Anyway, don't miss the Diva. Elysian Acoustic Labs will also have their flagship IEM, the Elysian Annihilator. I'd never heard the Elysian Annihilator until I heard this pair here, and the Annihilator is also exceptional. The Annihilator is a tribrid design, meaning it incorporates three different driver types, a dynamic driver, two electrostatic tweeters, and four balanced armature drivers. If the Diva is more neutral, the Annihilator is more exciting, more rousing, more dramatic. Its tone is on the richer side, but always controlled and not so rich as to knock it from what I'd call a reference class piece. As with the Diva, Lee Kuan Min did a fantastic job integrating these three different types of drivers to sound as one. Something I'll say about the Annihilator is that off the top of my head, I can't remember hearing an in-ear monitor that has a tonal balance this rich while still being among the most resolving IEMs I've heard. I think an important part of that is that Elysian integrates the Sonian EST electrostatic tweeters in the Annihilator in one of the best integrations of this driver type I've heard. Anyway, like the Diva, the Annihilator in 2023 comes with similar upgrades, and needless to say, the Elysian Annihilator is unquestionably another can't-miss at CanJam Singapore. Sennheiser's exhibit at CanJam Singapore will be busy, as Sennheiser recently launched a new member of the legendary HD600 series family with the new Sennheiser HD660 S2. What's changed with the new HD660 S2? Well, Sennheiser has optimized driver airflow, moved to a lighter, more responsive voice coil, now with an impedance of 300 ohms, and changed the driver surround to lower the resonant frequency. In terms of sound, the new Sennheiser HD660 S2 is my favorite of all the HD600 class headphones, Sennheiser having engineered it for more robust bass presence, which I've long felt the platform could benefit from. And on top of that, it sounds to me like Sennheiser refined the treble as it sounds smoother, yet it's also more detailed and resolving up top. I feel like I've been a lifelong fan of the HD600 class family, actually going all the way back to the predecessor HD580. In the world of HeadFi then, I think the HD660 S2 is among the most important new products this year. Sennheiser will also have their new IE200 in-ear, which I feel punches well above its price. One of the neat and unique things about the Sennheiser IE200 is that it has dual position nozzles that let you seat the ear tips in two different positions for two different signatures. I definitely prefer the ear tip in the all the way down position, which is fuller sounding, but you should definitely try both at CanJam Singapore. Of course, Sennheiser will also have its other IE family in-ears, including the IE600 and IE900. Their flagship IE900 has been a pretty constant companion of mine since its release and remains one of my reference IEMs. I also think the IE900 is the best sounding IEM Sennheiser has yet released. Now, in what might be viewed as an unexpected HeadFi recommendation, I'd say my biggest must hear at Sennheiser's exhibit at CanJam Singapore, other than the HD660 S2, is actually their latest true wireless in-ear, the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3. Of all the true wireless earphones I've heard to date, the Momentum True Wireless 3 is the best sounding I've heard for music playback, for musical enjoyment. You can find better noise cancelers, better pass-through modes, both of which I should say, though, the Momentum True Wireless 3 does a fine job with, but for music enjoyment, again, it's simply the best out there of all the ones I've so far tried, and I've tried a lot of them. In fact, in terms of tonal balance alone, I think the Momentum True Wireless 3 is among the best tuned of all of Sennheiser's in-ears. Of course, it won't replace their IE900 as my Sennheiser in-ear reference, but the True Wireless 3 is my current True Wireless reference for music listening. 
Now, of course, in addition to all the things I've just mentioned, I expect Sennheiser will have their full product lineup at CanJam Singapore. And I am excited to say they will also have a Sennheiser HE1 at the show, but only for a very limited number of listening sessions. For those of you not familiar with the HE1, it is, in my opinion, the best sounding headphone of any type ever created at any price. There's an RSVP form online in the CanJam Singapore discussion thread, but I wouldn't be surprised if they're all spoken for by the time you see this. One of my personal favorite things about CanJam Singapore is experiencing gear that I don't normally come across outside of Asia. In fact, it's one of the reasons Headfire's venture across the globe to join us in Singapore every year. At CanJam Singapore last year, there was a new IEM which captured the ears and hearts of many, and luckily, you'll be able to experience it this year as well. An IEM born and bred right here in Singapore. That IEM is this, the Dita Perpetua. The Perpetua is Dita's flagship IEM, and in a world of multi-BAs, hybrids, and tribrid designs, the Perpetua stakes its claim with a single 12mm PPTD dynamic driver housed within a 7-piece CNC machine titanium body. Dita says that this 12mm driver sits in an acoustic chamber of titanium specifically optimized for its size and function. The result is an organic full sound with a low end that dynamic aficionados will certainly crave. If you're a lover of robust yet detailed low end signatures, you'll likely find its bass presence among the best in its class, offering the layering and texture frequently associated with top dynamics without the bloat that can often hold them back. At the opposite side of the spectrum, I find the Perpetuous top end a bit smooth, but with great extension. It's easily forgiving with my more aggressive, sharp, sometimes piercing test tracks. The Perpetuous cable sports the second generation of Dita's awesome plug and comes with 2.5mm balanced, 3.5mm unbalanced, and 4.4mm balanced terminations. At the other end of the cable is a rather unique two-pin connector designed specifically for the Perpetuous recessed sockets. Dita says that careful planning and testing went into the Perpetuous connectors, and it's compatible with a majority of aftermarket two-pin cables. If you already have a collection of premium aftermarket 2-pin cables, chances are your library will be compatible with the Perpetua's unique connector design. The Perpetua is one of those IEMs that tells a story beginning the moment you first set eyes on it. From the packaging, to the accessories, to the fit and finish, and finally to the sound, it's a tale of pure Singaporean luxury. Come experience that story for yourself at Project Perfection's exhibit this CanJam Singapore. Taking a break from portable gear for a moment, Sam Audio will be exhibiting some excellent full-size gear at CanJam Singapore, including Burson Audio's powerful and versatile Conductor 3X GT desktop DAC amp. On one hand, it's a fully realized piece of audiophile kit featuring dual ESS9038 DAC ICs, multiple analog inputs for preamp functionality, swappable discrete op amps for sound shaping, and up to 10 watts of output power for even the lowest sensitivity headphones. But on the other hand, the Conductor 3X GT also sports features that will appeal to gamers as well, like a mic input for headsets or ant line mod mics, an output for subwoofers or other tactile transducers, and a chassis that is essentially one big heatsink with a built-in 120mm Noctua cooling fan to boot. That means the Conductor 3X GT is flexible enough to be equally at home in both your listening rig as well as your battle station, making it a compact Swiss Army type solution if space is at a premium. Will it work for you? Bring your reference full-size headphones to Sam Audio's exhibit at CanJam Singapore 2023 and hear for yourself. At the end of 2019, Final announced a high-end in-ear monitor that I think should and would have gained more traction had the world not come to a standstill so soon after. This is the Final A8000, and I first heard it just after it was announced while visiting a store location that Final had set up in Tokyo. They had a quiet listening booth in the store where Final CEO Mitsudo Hosu let me audition the Final A8000, and it was love at first listen. The Final A8000 is an absolutely superb in-ear, and like its over-ear sibling, the D8000, it reflects a move by Final in the last several years under the stewardship of Mitsuro Hosu to a more engineering-focused approach, but without abandoning the more emotional, spiritual approach that had been Final's hallmark under its legendary late founder, Kanemori Takai. I really love the direction Hosu-san has taken Final in, and the A8000 is a perfect example of that. 
Aesthetically, the final A8000's design language is pure final, uniquely sculpted, gorgeous materials and construction quality, and inside is pure engineering. The A8000 uses a single full-range dynamic driver per side, the diaphragms of which are made of solid beryllium, and final is using acoustic-grade beryllium of the highest quality. Final focused a great deal on both the measurements and subjective evaluation, and the result is a reference class IEM that happens to follow the Harman in-ear target rather closely, but with a brighter, very detailed top end. To my ears, though, it's never harsh and always resolving. The A8000 is at the outer limits of what I want for treble presence, yet doesn't betray my personal preference for a smoother top end. To my ears, then, it's a smooth, bright signature with rich, impactful lows. And again, to my ears, absolutely superb. Not surprisingly, the final A8000 also has extraordinarily low total harmonic distortion. At CanJam Singapore, give the A8000 the attention it deserves. Another product that definitely reflects Final's newer direction is the new Final ZE8000 True Wireless Earphones. A lot has gone into the Final ZE8000, and to me, it might steal the crown for the best True Wireless Earphones I've so far heard. As of the shooting, it's at least one of the two best I've heard. With the ZE8000, Final emphasizes things I'm not sure I've ever seen publicly discussed or promoted in the context of True Wireless Earphones. Things like what kind of amplification it uses. In the case of the ZE8000, it's Class AB amplification, as opposed to the Class D type found in other True wireless earphones. Final says Class AB provides the optimum balance between sound quality and power efficiency. And they even paid close attention to the type of capacitors they used. Now, another thing I found very interesting is that Final, in discussing the digital signal processing in the ZE8000 with their switchable 8K sound DSP circuit, they focus not just on frequency domain performance, but also time domain performance. This is something I'll be discussing in the context of audio measurements going forward, and something I think will come to better appreciate going forward, and something that'll play a role in future audio quality assessment metrics that I'll be discussing in more detail soon. Anyway, I was thrilled to see Final focusing on time domain performance with the ZE8000. Now, of course, all of this wouldn't mean much if it didn't result in great sound. And again, as true wireless earphones go, it's among the very best I've heard so far. So, make sure not to miss Final's A8000, the ZE8000, and also their flagship D8000 line of over-ears at CanJam Singapore. This is Jomo Audio's new Alpha TI. First previewed at Tanjam New York 2023 and perfected just in time for its launch at Tanjam Singapore, the Alpha TI is a luxurious limited edition concept monitor where production is capped at only 39 pairs. But why only 39 pairs? Each Alpha TI earpiece begins with two 9.7mm dynamic drivers from Foster, coupled by a custom CNC brass acoustic chamber. These are then mated with six balance armature drivers from Knowles segmented into two groups to handle mids and upper mids separately. Rounding out that driver complement is a new multi-layer ceramic piezoelectric driver functioning as a super tweeter. Controlled by a four-channel crossover network and channeled through three acoustic waveguides for improved time domain performance, all of that resides in a shell that is made by I kid you not, 1,200 layers of medical grade titanium that have been melted and fused together by lasers. And finally, these rough shells undergo 12 hours of hand polishing to reach the lustrous finish you see here. As you can imagine, that exacting but excruciating craftsmanship can take quite a toll on Jomo's staff, who, like any of us, have a breaking point. And according to Joseph Mu, founder of Jomo Audio, that breaking point is somewhere between 39 and 40 pairs. Since the Alpha TI was a last minute arrival, I haven't been able to spend nearly as much time with it as I would have liked. Having said that, two of its unique qualities stood out relatively quickly. First, for a hybrid IEM, the Alpha TI possesses uncanny coherency. I can't even remember the last time I heard nine different drivers spread across three different driver types acting in unison the way they do here lending the Alpha TI a velvety, analog-sounding, almost vinyl-like presentation. Secondly, the Alpha TI is remarkably gracious and inoffensive. In listening for its strengths, I was amazed at how it has very little in the way of egregious flaws. There's no bloat, nor recession, nor glare or stridency to speak of. Simply put, it's impeccably well-mannered and easy to listen to, even with flawed recordings. The Alpha TI is definitely one of those cases where you'll just have to hear it to truly understand it which you can do at Jomo Audio's exhibit at Tianjin Singapore 2023. 
Again, Can Jam Singapore is taking place March 25th and 26th at the Pan Pacific Singapore Hotel in Marina Square, and this video was just a small portion of everything you'll be able to hear and see in Singapore this year. Now, we didn't have time to highlight every Can Jam exhibit, so scrolling on your screen now is a list of all of the exhibitors and brands you'll find at Can Jam Singapore 2023. Thank you for watching. From all of us here at HeadFi, we'll see you in Singapore and on the forums at HeadFi.org.